Yo, what's up guys, Jerome here, and it's phase three of Season of Discovery, which means time for the ultimate tier list. This is gonna tell you exactly what class to play in phase three if you wanna top the meters, if you wanna bring the maximum utility to the raid, or if you wanna blast that AoE damage. If you wanna secure your raid spot blasting dragons in Sucking Temple, look no further than this guide. All right, so we gotta talk methodology. I mean, you can't just come up with random guesses for which classes are the best, right? So the way it works is I went through all the top Warcraft logs parses to figure out which glasses are currently performing the best. Then I also combined that information with my own experience. We currently have the third fastest speedrun in the world for Sunken Temple. And then with Sims as well, we'll be able to figure out which glasses will perform the best with Biskier as well. So let's get started with the B tier. Let's talk Shadow Priest. For single target, Shadow Priests are lagging behind. They don't have any new DPS abilities other than Eye of the Void, which is primarily utility. The new Despair Rune on paper should amp up your dots by making them crit. It's really not nearly enough, though. And even the new Shadow Word Pain rank at level 50 is barely helping. A good example of this would be the current number one Shadow Priest parse in the world. That guy got out DPS by seven other players in his own raid, and he wouldn't even be visible on the meters. Things do get a lot better with AoE, though. Priest only had Mind Seer in Phase 2 and really solid Dynamite. The new Void Zone ability is one of the best AoE abilities in the whole game. It really catapults Shadow Priest near the top of the meters, at least on trash packs. I've even started using that ability on my Healing Priest to mow down the packs even faster. As for utility, Priest already had some of the best utility in the game with Homunculus. The thing is though, for most serious skills, this will end up being a 3 heal raid. That means hybrid healers like Shadow Priest will have to pick up the slack. Ultimately, Vampiric Embrace is still one of the highest utility best heals in the entire game. And on top of Vampiric Embrace, you also get the new Eye of the Void. That's a summoned unit that lets you apply Warlock Curses for 3 minutes, well, everything except Curse of Wreck. That makes Priests even more valuable than before, since they can technically steal one of the Warlock Raid spots. The Verdict. Every group wants a Shadow Priest, and most groups will even want a second one. But you wouldn't be bringing a Shadow Priest for their single target DPS. Instead, you're bringing them for their utility and their insane party healing. But hey, a guaranteed raid spot really isn't that bad. Not everybody gets to be a warrior. Let's talk Paladins. New runes like Wrath increase the damage of your core rotation abilities. But for single target, Paladins are definitely lagging behind other melee classes by a significant amount. Talking AoE, Paladins are insanely good for clearing the trash in the raid right now. I wouldn't be shocked to see a speedrun completely based around the AoE power of Paladins in the near future. Talking Utility, Paladins bring all the utility they usually have. But now their Seal of Martyrdom gives the raid way more mana. With a new patch this week, Red Paladins almost always generate more mana for healers than Shamans with Shamanistic Rage. The Verdict The reliable free mana every single second from Seal of Martyrdom is straight up broken. So sure, the damage might not be number one, but if I played Alliance, I'd be stacking four or five Paladins right now. Let's talk Warlocks. On paper, new runes like Backdraft giving 30% spell haste would be really strong. But the current logs are telling a very different story. Talking AoE, Warlocks have all their typical AoE tools from previous phases. And they have nice rune swaps like Improved Shadow Boat Volley. Talking Utility, Utility really is the reason to bring Warlocks right now. Primarily because of Curse of Wreck for your melee. The Verdict Warlocks are in a pretty low place right now and more buffs might be on the horizon. So we've talked B tier, let's get into the A tier. Let's talk Mages. Mages right now are lagging far behind physical damage dealers, at least in single target fights. Even big Frost Firebolt damage can't save them. Talking AoE, mages are the AoE kings right now by a large margin. A small word of caution though. By the end of the phase, trash will be dying so fast that Living Bomb won't even trigger. As for utility, mages have Arcane Intellect and they can portal you out of Sunken Temple after the raid. The Verdict I don't want to give you bad news, but it really doesn't feel like this is a mage phase. Mages do middle of the pack damage and they require resources like PI and Innervate to really shine. Let's talk Druids. For single target, Ferals are just behind the top classes right now. They do get a strong new enchant called Wolf's Head Trophy. That gives them free energy whenever they shapeshift. And the new Ancient Divining Rod with a 25 agility enchant is huge for stat scaling. Talking AoE, Ferals are still really limited on AoE, at least until next phase. Still, Boomkins get Gale Winds, which amps up your Hurricane on Trash. For utility, Druids are still must-haves with Wild Strikes. The off healing is still great as well, but really I'm just after those inner rates on my priest lately. The Verdict Druids have so much utility, but they luckily also bring top end DPS to really justify stacking them. My speedrun plans to bring three of them in the near future, and I just can't wait for those inner rates. Let's talk shamans. 
for single target and hand shamans are doing really well right now. Sure, their new runes like mental dexterity definitely help, but really, they just scale extremely well. As for AoE, we've all seen how great tank shamans are with overcharge. For DPS though, shamans still have solid options like chain lightning which procs from your maelstrom weapon rune. Over on the utility side of things, shamans really can't be beat. Not only do you get their overpowered totems like poison cleansing for Aranicus, but you also get shamanistic rage which amps up your entire raid with mana every minute. The Verdict Shamans are so strong at DPS and so useful in terms of utility. Whether DPS or tank shamans, multiple should be brought to the raid with few exceptions. We've covered the A tier, now let's get into the best of the best, the S tier. Now let's talk hunters. Melee hunters get new runes like Cadillac Reflexes and Raptor Fury which reduce cooldown time and increase damage, and ranged hunters get Lock and Load. Every time you use a trap, you basically get a free bonus Chimera shot on the boss, and the attack speed bonus of Focus Fire really amps up your damage even more. As for AoE, this is where dual spec really comes in clutch. Melee hunters can easily be ranged hunters with just a quick switch, being able to hit multiple explosive shots back to back with Lock and Load, and then the explosive trap is just icing on the cake. And unlike other classes like mages, you just never run out of mana. As for utility, hunters bring Aspect to the Lion, which is a must-have for any raid. They also have True Shot Aura for the melee, which is really big because the meta is shifting towards physical damage. And on fights like the Atali Defenders, you have Freezing Trap, which really comes in clutch. Hunters are also insane at pet pulling, which is one of the keys to speedrunning Sunken Temple. The Verdict Hunters are arguably in the best place of any class right now. They're great at everything, they bring massive utility, they do competitive single target damage. Hunters really are a god class in Phase 3 and they go right in the S tier. Let's talk Rogues. For single target, Rogues are dominating right now. New runes like Combat Potency give free energy to ramp up your damage, and Cut to the Chase means you basically only have to press one other button the rest of the fight. Rogues offer really consistent, reliable damage in every encounter. Talking AoE, the AoE side of things is really why Rogues won't be stacked in speedruns. Shuriken Toss just isn't going to cut it unfortunately. As for utility, improved exposed armor can offer a significant damage increase to your raid. A negative though is that it does come at a loss of personal DPS. On top of that, rogues do bring a reliable kick to the raid which is useful on several fights. The Verdict Rogue single target damage is extremely high, but rogue AoE is near the bottom right now. And while improved exposed armor on paper is great, you really don't need multiple rogues to apply it. Rogues do go in the S tier, but you really won't be bringing more than a couple of them. Let's talk about warriors. For single target, there's really no debate. Warriors are the absolute single target kings. On short fights like Atalalarian, warriors are pushing over 2,000 DPS, and on longer fights like Jamalan and Ogam, they still push over 1,800 DPS currently. There's really not too much special going on here. It's just the scaling of the percentage based runes like Flagellation. Plus, you really scale well with your new gear like the new raid tier set. That combines nicely with the old Gnomorgan and BFD crafted gear because of the short fights, it really amps up your attack speed through the roof. Talking AoE, warriors always bring really solid AoE to the table. The thing is though, in this phase, they really won't need very much AoE. Still, Whirlwind is really strong and some warriors are even using dual spec to bring sweeping strikes to the table situationally. As for utility, Battle Shout and Sunder are still staples, but Rallying Cry is a true raid saving cooldown that most guilds haven't really fully mastered yet. If your raid's dipping dangerously low, this is one of the best cooldowns to press. The Verdict Warriors have gone way past S tier. They're now firmly entrenched in the overpowered spot. If you're looking to parse or speedrun, bringing at least 10 of these fellas into your run is a really good idea. After all, Warriors are the future of Phase 3 and they even look to be the future of the rest of Season of Discovery. Alright guys, so we just got through the ultimate DPS tier list for Phase 3. I've got to ask, what class do you think is the most overpowered and which one is the most underpowered and needs some buffs? And while you're busy answering that, make sure to subscribe, it really helps the channel out a lot. And then check out my ultimate things to do at level 50 video, it'll really help you out to get ahead.